All right. So the idea here is that we're going to express each of these mathematical statements using predicates, quantifiers, logical connectives, and mathematical operators where the domain consists of real numbers. Basically, what we're going to do is take these perfectly legitimate English sentences and turn them into logic speak. And the first one's pretty easy, but uh, it can be tricky if you don't think about it. It says the product of two negative numbers is positive. Well, I know I'm going to have a universal quantifier here, so for every x, that's one of the negative numbers. For every y, that's a different negative number, could be different. Um, so it's got to be y. So for every x and for every y, let's write that down. Um, for every x, for every y, something's going to happen. Now usually people, students think that uh, the next thing to go in there is that, uh, is, is, is something involving a conjunction. And you have to be careful with conjunctions and universals, and we'll explain that in a second. It turns out that um, what we're really saying here is that if, for every x and y, if x is negative, if y is negative, then x times y has to be positive. So we have to restrict it somehow. And the way we're going to do that is the following. So the first part of the hypothesis here is x has to be less than zero. Now, what's also true is y has to be less than zero. But the really important part of this process, or this statement, comes here. What happens if x is less than zero and y is less than zero? I don't use another conjunction. Instead, it, this implies that x times y, the product of x and y, is not equal to zero, but is greater than zero. And that's how you solve that problem. Now, again, a lot of students here, and, and it's, not, it's pretty clear on this one, but in other problems it could be trickier, we'll put an and there. Um, and that just simply isn't true. It's not true that all real numbers are both, are both um, negative, you know, x and y are both negative and that um, their, their product is positive. It's that for a certain subset of all real numbers, this is true. And that's why I have to use the conditional. All right, I hope that was clear. Because it was sort of clear to me, but it might not have been clear to you. Um, listen to it again if it's not clear. All right. The difference of a real number in itself is zero. Oh boy, this is like a gift, right? We'll do it in green. Um, so we're talking about any real number, right? So for every x, what's true? Well, the difference between x and itself has to be equal to zero. Wow, that's really nice. Look, for all x, it's true that x minus x equals zero. And implicit in this statement is that x is a real number because that's the domain. x consists of all real numbers. All right, so. That was pretty easy. All right, this one's a little bit trickier. It's a similar situation to what we had in A. So there is going to be a conditional involved, but let's read what it says. It says, a negative real number does not have a square root that is a real number. All right, well, all we have to do is figure out, well, we're talking about one real number, right? Um, so here's what you go. Oh, I'm still on the uh, highlight. Let's turn that off and erase it. Okay. Now we're back. So a negative real number does not have a square root that is a real number. All right. Um, so here's how one way to think about it. For every x, so we're going to consider an x. That's the x that's going to be a negative real number. We're going to force it to be so. How do we force it to be so? Well, with a conditional. If x is less than zero, what does that mean? It means that there doesn't have to exist. There doesn't exist a y, okay? It's, it's not necessarily the case. Um, in fact, it, it, it's not the case at all. Uh, it doesn't, there doesn't exist an x, uh, a y such that 
x equals y squared. Okay, that's a little bit tricky. So a negative real number does not have a square root that is a real number. Uh, again, let's go through it. So for all x, if x is less than 0, then there doesn't exist a y such that if I square y, I get back x. Okay. Now, a lot of students, and we're going to do this and then cross it out because it's wrong. What is this saying? Well, I shouldn't do it in green. I should do it in some weird color so you know it's wrong. Then we cross it out. Um, purple. Nothing wrong with purple, but we're going to use it as an example of what not to do. Get all these nasty emails from people whose favorite color is purple. All right. So I get on tests a lot of times something that looks like this. It might not be exactly like this, but this is the idea that a lot of students have trouble with. Um, and so the idea here is, all right, well, this is what students think. They're like, for all x, x is less than zero, all right, and it's true that there doesn't exist a y such that y squared equals x. Well, that's wrong because right here, this is untrue, right? It's not true that all real numbers are less than zero. So that's absolute nonsense math, which makes this all nonsense math. Nonsense math, all right? So we're going to get rid of the, uh, the proof of that so that no one can be confused. Um, I hope you understand that that's why we need the conditional because after a universal quantifier like for every, we've got to limit it somehow. It's not true that every x is less than zero, but for every x that's less than zero, the conclusion is true right here. All right, I hope that made sense. If it didn't, um, watch this video 14 times and like it.